Hello, babies. This is something different. Uh, but I made sure to anything with that. I stuff, made sure huh? to get. I turned the cartoons on. I was watching my kid by myself. I turned the cartoons on high. <laughs> made sure to get it out of the way before the show tonight, Bill, just so I was on time. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. I just got. To, I just got done polishing, polishing off a nice little turd. <laughs> Is that what we're calling Irene now? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's a bit uh, not going to get better than that. What do you say we start the show with some <laughs> opening takes? The Simple Mind Sports Show. Uh, we got a lot to get to today, boys. Let's keep it tight. Um, that that one goes on its own. No one, no yeah, need. Yeah, no, no need. No need. Yeah, no need. Uh, I'll I'll kick it off with some opening takes. I'm going to start with my. Uh, Big green giant Celtics boner that's going on right now. Uh, getting lost a little bit in the Boston news because of all the uh, off the field stuff going on with the Patriots and the Red Sox and the Bruins. But Celtics are the best team in the NBA right now. It's not really even close. Uh, they're certainly the hottest team. Jason Tatum has taken it up to another level. Uh, Eastern Conference Player of the Week two times in a row, if that matters to you. But if you look at the player last, of the month, he's going on the month. Yeah, he'll get yeah, it. He's got because the, he's the got last the month. ten or fifteen games. He's averaging uh, close to 32 points, seven assists or six rebounds, whatever it is. Absolutely a uh, different level. Their last game against Oklahoma City, who's nothing, you know, they're you know nothing special, obviously, but Missy Marcus Smart and Robert Williams didn't skip a beat. I mean, they let him back in at the end a little bit coming off a of back to back, but they were up by 20 that whole game. That wasn't really a competition. They went, was it four for four or five for five on the West Coast? Uh, tonight, as we record on Wednesday, they're back to play the Jazz for another quote unquote that's a, test. That's a tough game. Yeah, I just think at this point, the, the sample size of them playing this way is bigger than the sample size this year of them playing bad. So uh, we'll have Jack uh, from uh, CLNS Media to talk a little bit the Celtics. And I'm interested to see if he thinks this is the team that we should expect to see moving forward. And I'm even looking to like next year moving forward or, or if there's a chance the bucket falls out from these guys. And the budding's gone, right? In your eyes? Uh, on well, why don't you wait to find out? During the okay, show, well, the okay. Getting is actually fully, fully gone off superstar for Jason Tatum. Uh, that's my Celtics take, Bill. I want to throw it over to you for your opening take. After I think my opening take last week was I was bitching about the lack of movement <laughs> that we've seen in Boston sports in the last week. Well, uh, 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 big changes this weekend. Uh, Lindholm coming over for the Bruins, and then the big story of the weekend, in my opinion, Trevor Story, six year, 140 million dollar deal with the Red Sox. You know, Bloom got that one big deal out of the way. You know, let's get rid of the Tampa, Tampa North or whatever we want to talk. Some of these these moves, as much as I like Trevor Story as a player, I think the real move is what you missed out on was Freddie Freeman. I think the, the deal he signed for a six, six-year deal, I would have would much rather pay Freddie Freeman than Trevor Story. Um, Trevor Story just seems like a guy that's going to replace Xander Bogarts next year, which brings me up to my next point real quick. When it comes to contract negotiations with Raphael Devers, there has been none. I think I've said the last two years that the biggest object is to get him signed and get him signed long term and to go to arbitration with him. Or I'm sorry, he just signed. They, they beat arbitration. They yeah, beat they the clock, but 11.3. To, I think he's at to even just tempt arbitration is a fucking joke where you've seen guys like Tatiste in Vlad uh, Wanda Franco in the last two years alone start sign big deals. Vlad, I mean, um, Raphael Devers right now is a borderline top 10 player in the league right now. And he's putting it up back to back years. And it's a shame that they've, they're fucking not even approached him with contract negotiation. He's a guy that you want to build around this franchise and it's a slap in the face. He's your best young player that you've produced. I guess you could say since Mookie best Mookie bets, but I think, Right now, Devers is a better hitter, all around better, better player than Mookie Betts. And it's just a shame what they're doing to him. And yeah, you know, and I'll he, eat my own words if they sign to an extension. But right now, it, it's bullshit. And he produced in the playoffs. I guess maybe we'll give Heim a little bit of credit, seeing as they were locked out for 90 plus days. Um, but let's see. Yeah, if that talk, if they don't, if they don't have that talk during this season, and certainly by the beginning of next season, then um, that, you know, there's no excuse for it. Uh, I apologize. Raymond. My take was all over the place in the Red Sox, but it needs to get out. Bill's opening take Red Sox. Raymond, uh, let's start over to you for your opening take. Yes. Uh, while you both had boners of uh, sports takes, let me give you a Langevin and a big time <laughs> Debbie Downer with the New England Patriots. Uh, as the AFC strengthens itself, the AFC West powerhouse, uh, Deshaun Watson now going to the Cleveland Browns. The big trade today, Tyreek Hill going to the Miami Dolphins. We counter that with Terrence Mitchell and Malcolm Butler. What the fuck is the Patriots doing? 
I mean, everyone's getting better and you're just standing, sitting on your hands, Bill. We need to do something here because this AFC is stacked now. And the only way I think you're going to get into the playoffs is by beating the Buffalo Bills and winning the AFC East. So I don't know what we're doing, but we need to do something quick. You might be a six win team this year. I mean, you keep going down every time we talk to you. It's like, well, oh, no, you, take another one. Take say what you want about Matt Ryan. He's in a good spot in, in um, the Colts right now. I mean, I, I like Frank Reich a lot. He he basically made Carson Wentz an MVP Email. Jesus. <laughs> no, I we'll don't. see. I I'm not as high in the Colts and Matt Ryan as everybody else. You know, I think Miami's trash, but they got a lot of talent. Um, Deshaun Watts. There's a, there's way more question marks in the AFC than a lot of people are giving credit for. They're, lot, they're saying, you know, all the pundits are, are – I guess rightfully so with all that talent coming over, you know, calling it, um, you know, uh, you know, landmark and the Celtics are going down, but there's a lot of question marks in that talent coming over. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And everyone's talking about Tyree kill going to Miami and how good that makes them. What does it do to the chiefs and Patrick Mahomes fucking binky? Can they, can they rebound off that? And it'll be interesting. Uh, to see. They're a they, dynasty. They certainly took a step. <laughs> well, that dynasty took a step back or half step back at least. Uh, so we'll do a little hey, hold NFL on real talk. quick. Have you guys heard the breaking news? Was Unvac- it the last five minutes since the show started? Unvaccinated yeah. players can play in New York now, yeah. so Kyrie Irving can play home games. Bullshit. You know, Bill, you and I were riding high. I don't know why I'd bring that up. I'm sorry. It is, I'm sorry. It is sorry, sports guys. news, so thanks for doing your job on air, talent. Uh, so we'll be doing uh, the Bruins trade lot, trade deadline. Uh, talk a little uh, Humpus Lindholm. Lindholm, Hampus Lindholm. Uh, we'll be doing oh, I like so- Humpus better. <laughs> Humpus, that's, that sticks. That's a weird name, Hampus. <laughs> Either way, the hamster. Uh, Red Sox signed Trevor Story. Goddamn we do Swedes. A little bit of Red Sox talk. Uh, check in on the NFL. What are the Patriots doing? And uh, yes, our Celtics chat with Jack, Jack Simon, out of uh, CLN House Media and Celtics blog. We like Jack. He'll be here to talk Celts. And then, of course, Simplest Minds of the Week. We've got a couple candidates for that. So welcome to the Simplest Minds Sports Show, Friday Rewind Edition, March 25th. Nailed it. Welcome to the show. It's the 25th, right? Yeah. First day of golf today. Or- yeah. Bill and I are golfing this- today. Way to time travel. Good job. Bill. Thank you. The show. <laughs> Thank you. Go to, head on down start to start over. Birch. Start over. Okay. Start over. Uh, you know what else is really a good place to go? Uh, White Birch Brewing, the best craft brewing in New Hampshire, Nashua, New Hampshire. Ray address, please. Four sixty Amherst Street. Good side of Amherst Street. Head on down to the uh, brewery. Get yourself a flight. Get yourself a pint. Get uh, yourself the Doctor Vittles pint. Uh, a flight of pints. Uh, which is uh, becoming God. a fast, fast favorite for anyone down at the brewery. Uh, grab yourself a hat, whatever you want to do down there. It's a blast. If you can't get there, then uh, certainly get your local beer stores. Wherever you get it, tell me Simple Minds boys sent you White Birch Brewing. Uh, all right, let's talk Bruins, Bill. Let's do a little bit of Bruins talk to start the show. It's not very often we do, so uh, this, is, uh, this is a special occasion. Hampus Lindholm comes over from the Anaheim Ducks. Hampus. Sorry, Humpus Lindholm comes from the Anaheim Ducks. In return, the Bruins send this year's first round pick, the uh, 2023 second round pick, 2024 second round pick, Euro Vakaninen, and the corpse of John Moore. Uh, immediately after Lindholm saw, uh, was traded, basically the day after, he signs an eight year extension with a $6.5 million AAV. Here's where I want to start, Bill. Pay attention. What do you think of the trade in itself? Try not to go ahead. On the email, just what do you think of the trade in itself? Did the did the Bruins give up too much in this? Is he worth it? What did you think of the trade uh, initially? And since you've had a few days to think about it, I mean, I like it. I mean, it is a big haul, and it or it 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 makes me feel better with the, the haul only because you got an extension signed. If you gave up for a rental, that's an issue, right? I think I'd hate to trade a lot more if you got a rental and you couldn't get it a deal done. It was promising that a deal was done immediately. You know, you heard right after the trade Saturday that the deal was probably going to get done. They can't technically sign it till like three Oh one on Monday after the trade deadline. But I mean, not, that's good. I, it makes them better on paper. You know, the, the good trade, big haul back in nine. And, you know, you hope that he develops into a Hampus limb home. I mean, that's really, you know, the ceiling. He and you hope he gets there. No, it's, he's, he's I mean, he's six, four. Guy. Yeah, you're looking at Lindholm, 6'3", 6'4", 230. I mean, he's yeah. a big he's a big guy. Right. And I mean, average. Thank you. It makes That's you tall. better, but it's a haul. 
I mean, that it, you, it's hard to win when you give up three out of the last five first round draft picks. I mean, I just say that. So you better you better hope that this, you know, this is, makes you. A yeah, lot I mean, the, the big win here was not giving up Lysel or um, Lori, the kid at Ohio State. Right. Uh, so that those have been the, the, your only two decent prospects in your system. So giving up on them. I mean, they're talking about even bringing Lysel up this year because yeah, they be fucking up. whiffed on the back end of this deadline once we'll get to but just in terms of the trade i agree with you like when i first heard it good and what they what i like was they staggered these picks right so it's not you're not getting crushed in one draft uh it's every, every three years in a row you're going to be missing a pick see if you can make that up by trading and getting one back but uh and vac and Iden, pff, who gives a shit i, I mean really really mm-hmm. who cares he was a first but round again, pick. It's another failed first out. round. So technically you think you traded three first round picks in the last five years. One of those first round picks that you picked back in Iden that you just traded. Like it's, it, it hurts the organization when you're dumping first round picks and granted a few of them, I mean, to get rid of Bacchus, obviously you want to, I mean, that's fine, but the Rick Nash deal obviously didn't work out in their favor because of injuries. But I mean, that's another guy that they were looking to sign. So it's just, it, it's, it's just a matter a of way. Their, where it, they it sucks are. to build your team like this. But it it does suck to build your team like this, but we've talked about this. You're you're in this uh, seems like never ending bubble of Bergeron leaving. And this really seems like his last year. And you're a couple points out of a, of a good playoff position. So, yeah, you do it. I mean, you said it. You've said it all year, Bill. Trade the farm, make a run and then burn it down because that's that's you can't keep playing in the middle. And I think they did a little bit here. So. I keep jumping ahead. I yelled at you for doing that, but uh, the John Moore deal is what I want to focus on real quick. Uh, he was dumped, and I think they had to throw in a sec, an extra second round pick to dump his salary, which allowed the Bruins to open up um, six million dollars in in cap space. I don't think it, I, I think the extra second round pick was for him and for Anaheim to eat the half a mil or okay, half yeah, fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, which gets me to the greater point of you open up the six million dollar space and you didn't do anything with it. So like when that deal came through and I saw and put that whole picture together before the deadline was over, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Great move. Sweeney. He just whiffed on the back end of it. He just yeah, I think we both whiffed. had I think we both had that that, you know, same feeling because I even said, all right, cool. You have you have cap space. Let's add now. You can add yeah. wings. I don't want to jump ahead, but your big biggest problem right here is Jake DeBrusque. You could go ahead. Move Jake. Go ahead. Go ahead you just did the same thing. <laughs> right. No, I did. I guess that's what I want to get to. I don't want to focus on the positives. Uh, let's just real quickly focus on Lindholm next to McAvoy, uh, big, sturdy uh, defenseman. I don't know how many Ducks games you've watched the last few years. Not a lot for me, but when they were making the playoffs and a really good team, when he was a rookie and a couple years in, he was eating up 20, 23 minutes in the playoffs. He was a big contributor there. Um, since the Ducks have sucked the last couple of years, he's, I think he's a minus two or three this year, actually. He's, Ducks are a better team with him off the ice this year. Yeah, um, but that doesn't really scare me. You, you see that with bad teams. Um, he has offensive prowess. He can get on the rush. He can be a power play two guy if you really need him, if Grizzlick's hurt, which he will be. Um, and, you know, he can, obviously he's a force in his end. He's not a big hitter. He's not a big bruiser, but he's a big body. So I think he's got enough skill, speed, to keep up with McAvoy and uh, he can be that guy that sticks in the back end and allow McAvoy to finally go out there and score. And well, you can't beat up him up. Points. He's a big body. So you can't beat him up. You look at a lot of the Islander series for, you know, example, last year in the playoffs, you ease through Washington pretty good. What was a four to one in the series. And then Islanders just took it to your D guys. They beat you up. Your undersized Connor Clifton's Grizzlicks and even McAvoy, they took it to him. Now you got a guy that you're going to pair with McAvoy. That's a big, I mean, he's not Zdeno Char six, nine, but he's still six, three, six, four. He's a big, he can move the puck. He's got what, 32 points, I think this year. So, I mean, that you're, you're looking at a number one, like shutdown pairing. And I've already said, you know, Chitrin, the guys like this, that you, you put him with, with uh, McAvoy, you're looking at Seidenberg and Chara in their Stanley cup run in 2011. They, they this, pairing could be that good because McAvoy is that good. He should be in the Norris contention. And now you're adding a stay at home guy that can also move the puck. You know, yeah. you, he could, th- he could throw his body around when he wants to, but now you're getting a legit number one deep number one pairing. And now it allows you to move forward. He's going to fight for the, the, the bottom pairing now, but it gives you flexibility where you can move Mike Riley, who might not even make, he might not even be in the lineup. Uh, tomorrow night or t- last night against Tampa as we record this on Wednesday. I think I so saw I mean, the line. Could... I think they flipped him to the right side and kept Forbert in. 
So I think they like well, you that. have Brown too. You made the move for Brown where you, yeah, so you, you got that. Him. So you got a right side, but I think that, you know, there's, there was a, a concerted effort to get a puck moving guy with the big guys. So flipping Riley you on his offside, Clifton, keeping Forbert in uh Grizzlick with Carlo, you know, you might see uh Lindholm drop down with Carlo here and there and see how they all kind of play together. But now you have, you know, look, there were, you were right, Bill. There were so small. They were so small, including Zach and I, and those guys, sorry, Ray, uh, they were average, but for the NHL, they were small and uh, they made an effort to get bigger and skilled with Lindholm. They gave up a lot to get there, but they did it. But on the back end of this, they fucking whiffed, man. So uh, Monday trade deadline morning, we see the news come in. Jake DeBrus signs a two year extension, four million dollar AAV, uh, eight million total. That's for you, Ray. That's just a little quick math right there in my head. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, everybody, everybody thought that that was a precursor for a trade. Um, obviously DeBrusque asked for a trade outside of Boston a couple months ago and no, he didn't move. Sweeney cleared the space. He cleared the 6 million and DeBrusque signs the extension. He didn't move. There were, and I think, I think Sweeney fucked up. The other side of this is there wasn't enough uh, out there for Sweeney to make a move and the return for DeBrusque wasn't going to be enough. I just don't like that. I don't, I don't trust DeBrusque on that top pairing to be able to produce. And there were 33 trades made over this deadline. 54 players move, moved. You had the Kings, the Jets, and the Canucks all in on DeBrusque. You had the cop, Andrew Cop move, which there was like three seconds with some conditionals in there. You throw DeBrusque, maybe that's a possibility. They had the Rako, Rakel, Rakel. Um, you couldn't have made that deal out of Anaheim. DeBrusque. Absolutely. You could have, you had the, you keep John Moore. You don't give up the second. Yes, you could have. You absolutely could have made that deal. Um, Johansson moved uh, there. I mean, there was 33 players to move. You know, a ton of them were, were forwards. You had uh, Phil Kessel. You've been calling for a bill. He didn't move, which should have been an easy get. I think that they, uh, I think, I just think, Look, if you want to go get – this was like the David Price move. You want to go get the best player in the market, just go pay the most, and you're probably going to get him. That's what they did for Lindholm. He was the best defensive in the mar- defenseman on the market. They paid the most for him, so they got him. Maybe Sweeney had to work a little bit harder and be a little better at his job to get rid of DeBrusque and bring something in, bring something in here that would have contributed in the top six, and I think he whiffed on it. Now you're sitting here with, with your fucking $6 million dick in your hand for the rest of the season. So t- – Two points on this. So you had DeBrusque. I agree with you. They definitely overvalued DeBrusque. You know, the, he didn't have the value they want around the league, you know, and even with the extension, it was still too much. You know, I think they tried, there was teams in on them, but they're asking price. I don't know what it was, but if it was a first or second, you know, I don't know if they were trying to get a, a player back in that deal, but they shopped them. Nobody, nobody bit. As far as the Raquel deal goes, I'll give Sweeney a little credit. The pit, the guy that Pittsburgh gave up, you didn't have the prospect pool to do it. I didn't see him, you know, without, with Lysol and Laurie off the table, you already moved back in nine and he's probably your number other best trade piece. Jack Sidnik is not there. So you did not have the, the prospect pool that way. And I didn't see Sweeney dumping more picks. I mean, he blew his load. He blew his load. So not to interrupt you, trade. Bill, but I don't know if you saw this report. It was in Boston hockey. Now that the Claude Giroux denied the, uh, yeah, I trade saw that. Too. Yeah. But they had Boston with the best deal on the table after the Lindholm deal. So Sweeney he was, was willing before to for Lindholm. No, it was didn't after. He? He yes, but yes, that's why Boston still had the best deal on the table. So they had already given up the assets for Lindholm and they still had the best deal on the table for Giroux, which tells me that he was either willing to give up one of those two prospects or another first round pick or whatever. You don't get the what did he go for to the Panthers? It wasn't nothing. So first in, in their best prospects. If you had enough to get Claude Giroux and be the best offer on the table, you had enough to go get Raquel, Raquel, Raquel from Anaheim, you had- who you're already doing a deal with. Giroux Don't went the day before Claude Giroux went the day before. So you still had, you had the offer, but they went the day before. So then you shift, you shifted and went to Lindholm and spent the, the first and two seconds to get them. And then the couple players after that, your prospect, nobody wants J- uh, Jake Stanique or Jackson, or the fuck his trash name is to, again. Nobody wanted Jake the breast. The, the, the point of the signing when we all agreed was he's gone, but nobody wanted him. You shopped him around the league. He had no value. That was it. You're, you're, Lack of prospects is so weak. I think this year, like they didn't want to Lysel and Laurie were off the table, and that's it. Vakanainen was your only other 
Peace okay, so are you it. in? The, are you in the camp then? If you couldn't get enough for him, then you keep him on the team because he'll be more productive here than what you could have got for him. Because I not. think he's more. I th- I wanted him gone. I didn't think he was moving even this after this could the very deal. easily backfire. You could be stuck with Jake DeBrus next year for four million bucks. Mm-hmm. No, I trust me. I know, and I didn't. I didn't like the deal. I even told. I go why? I I didn't think they were trading him. I've been saying it for a while. As much as I want him gone, I don't think they were going to trade him. Because I again, he, you move him up to the first line. He had a good couple of weeks, and now we cited it last week in our show. Chemistry. You have you're you're rolling three lines, and the chemistry you're getting out of those three lines right now, and now you're adding to the piece. But the problem is, what you added to this team doesn't fucking matter because every team above you in the in the uh, NHL in the standings right now got better. And we're talking about teams that uh, uh, Florida sold out, Tampa sold out. Toronto, Toronto even got Toronto sold out. I mean, a Giordano was fucking a great addition for them. And now you're looking, you, I mean, you know, I think Paul Biz had a fucking tweet. Everybody in the East got better except for Washington. And it, it's just, you know, and it, looking at the Bruins, you're still got a steep mountain to climb because if you don't start gaining standings, you're facing Florida or you're facing Tampa in round one and you're not fucking getting out where you at right now. The, you're, you know, you got a dress rehearsal tomorrow, last night, technically, as yep. we release this. But I mean, you didn't do enough to get better and you paid a lot of money to get better for the future, but not this year. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Cause I don't, cause I don't hate the deal because I've been saying it now uh, as moved to the deadline that any deal that the Bruins make really need to make them better now and for the future. And I think they nailed that in the Lynn home deal. Six and a half. Again, I, I'll give Sweeney credit his deals. I mean, he, I mean, Carol, they pushed it out to eight L. years. He was, he was getting offers for Duck, he turned year. down more money. He turned down more money from the ducks because he wanted. Right. To. Um, and you know, was he probably wanted to play for a winner. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you give it? I give it a C plus. I mean, I, the, Lin, I, the I deadline really is, like the, the deadline as a whole. I'll give the de- uh, the Lindholm deal like a A minus. I, I think, think that you could have held on to a pick if you if I think that he whiffed. It was a good thought to open up that cap space, and he whiffed on on getting the player. So you could have held on to, I think, a second round pick if you if he wasn't thinking of head that way, and you probably gave up a little bit more for Lindholm. I won't fault him for that. So Rich, I really you gotta, like the you got to take into consideration that fifty percent salary retained. That's the only way you can make it without including John Moore. Well, even including John Moore because you're up against the cap. His his AAV was over five and a half million, I believe, on the last year of his deal. So I mean, the only way you could have did it was have Anheim take that fifty percent, and that extra second round pick is what got them, I think, over the deal. Truthfully, that's and maybe then, that you, John Moore contract's got another year or two on it, Bill. Again, it's, a it's shitty fucking contract. It's the fifty percent and more in there. That's I, I think I'm that is they overpaid that is a little tied. bit, but maybe oh, it's I a won't... second. Maybe it's a second for more and a second for the fifty percent. So you yeah, could yeah, be yeah. right, but there's something in there. I guarantee it. Had, I'm just saying they. Do with the I think they overpaid retention. for him, but I won't. I won't kill him for it because it's a good player for a need, and they signed him long term. They to. just it's whiffed on the back money. end. To your greater point, they're still not good enough. So what? So. Good job, C plus. If Lit, if Lindholm hit the market this year, you're looking at seven to eight for him to get come in at six and a half. I mean, that's you know now you got a, a true pairing for the next eight years with McAvoy and him. You know, yeah. you're gonna it's probably gonna look real shitty year six, seven, eight. <laughs> Maybe we'll but, see if that I TV mean, money you, comes in. No, Ray, I any mean, final I don't thoughts think he's on the? Uh, but. Any final thoughts on the bees? Uh, their defense got better. You have Jeremy Swayman, who's like still a rookie technically. Uh, so Beautiful that helps out. Year. Yeah. So that helps out a lot, I think, moving forward. And like Bill's always said, Char and Seidenberg comparison with uh, Humpus, Lindholm, and <laughs> McAvoy now. I love it. So yeah, let's do it. I was go really bees. just hoping for a go bees there, but that's no. go bees. Sorry. You know what? You, you cleared, guys go. You cleaned up that whole 18 minute segment in, uh, in about 15 seconds. And that's what you're here for, the obvious one. Just sharp and concise I, we, we appreciate that um yeah this is friday they played the lightning on thursday we'll see what happened there but they're climbing the charts they're not they're obviously not going to catch the panthers but you can avoid the panthers which I, that would be my goal get get close enough to them where you don't have to play them in the first round that would be my goal if you're the bros yeah, they're so good so good and they fucking have bar what's the goal what's so the goal uh, i think it's like i think it was like 26 18... to three or something i think the first what was it? It was seven nothing. Well, they got they shut lost out twice. Seven and nothing. I thought and it was, then like, it was seven like four. Yeah, I yeah. thought we had like four or something. Going, really so. bad, really bad. So you don't want to play them. Um, okay, uh, we'll uh, we'll see how Lindholm shakes out after Thursday's game on the Lightning. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with some Red Sox. Stuff. The 
like how there's no there's no like off air banter. Sorry, you said we had to be a tight schedule tonight. Oh, that's true. Okay, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> gonna, the yeah. Red Sox signed somebody, Ray. I'm gonna go to Ray. Red Sox signed, yeah, somebody. Trevor Story, uh, out of Colorado, obviously coming to play second base, six years, 140 million dollar deal. Um, how much better does this make the Red Sox? Well, we haven't had a real second baseman in a very long time on this team because of that fucking pud, Dustin Pedroia. So this is very nice to see that they're addressing the need. Trevor Story is a goal, goal clubber. Sorry, I was very slow to get to the mute button there, and it was my mistake going to Ray first. I didn't even anticipate that shitty Pedroia take and his ridiculous hate for Dustin Pedroia. But uh, uh, same question to you, Bill. Tr- uh, Trevor Story. Uh, look, uh, synopsis on Trevor Story. Let's see. Uh Borderline gold glove guy. I looked it up, but you were you were closer to right than I was. I didn't think he was as good, but he's, he's been been nominated in the a couple of times. Yep. Um, obviously a good hitter. Everyone print everyone is basically in, in Colorado, but he's probably above the fold in terms of Colorado hitters and what he can do. Um yeah, I think so him and Arenado. You got a you guy. got a really good hitting middle, really good fielding middle infielder for probably below market. He's coming off a bad year. In a weird, you know, contract contractual year, twenty three per. How much better is he going to make the team? I mean, it stabilizes your second base. I mean, it just makes your lineup deeper. I, I mean, that you know, you look at last year's lineup. You you, you had the best, you know, one of the best offenses in baseball, and you're, you're probably going to get there. I mean, I think your outfield offense is pretty weak right now. I mean, go ahead, give us I, give us your uh, ideal lineup. I I put one there, but feel free to mess with it. I mean, I, I think. I wouldn't mind seeing Story lead off. It's either Kiki or Story. So we'll we'll say Kiki one, Story two. I'd probably put Bogarts, Devers, JD. Uh shit, who else? Uh Vasquez, uh Verdugo. Do you want to tell him? Dahlbach. Bradley. Am I close? Yeah, it's pretty much almost spot on for what's Rich's email. Just is. open the fucking email. Fucking email I had man. uh Kike leading off because that's where he was last year. We'll see if he can uh, continue that story. Second, I had Devers third um, just because that's three right-handed bats in a row. If you don't put him there and uh, he's been slotted third most, most times Bogarts, JD Verdugo. I put above Dahlbach Vasquez, JBJ. Um, that but, bottom of the lineup is, ugh. I mean, Vasquez is not bad for a catcher. No, but Dahlbach and JBJ. Ugh. I'm no Dahlbach fan. Obviously, the last month of the season, he was on fire. He's going to really, you know, I don't think you can rely on Bobby Dahlbach to be anything. We were on the 200 watch for most of the season last year. He's certainly going to have to come in and prove it. If he can, if he can hit like the last two months of the season and be at that 240 mark with 30 home run power and 100 RBI power, then that's a pretty good, that's a pretty goddamn good seventh hole hitter. Um, I'll tell you what, but story, I, right, story slots, everybody certainly in a better spot with him there, as opposed to Christian Arroyo for sure. I'm I mean, you're, you're one through six is as, I mean, you're going to be able to put that up against oh. anybody in baseball. Yeah. And, and, and truthfully, I think, you know, to, to break it up, I'm leading story off. I mean, I think for me, that would probably be ideal. You know, I say, but I think Kiki, you can move him down in the lineup. I wouldn't mind seeing him kind of break up that doll box, JBJ, shit at the bottom so i mean if you if you move if you kind of move store i like story i mean he stole 20 bases you don't really have a base dealer kiki's not going to steal a lot of bases the guy's got wheels you know he can hit he can get he's going to get on base he draws walks i mean i think he's a good addition to the team and that's a top of your lineup type guy i think he could be a true leadoff hitter i know in colorado he wasn't really leading off he was always batting and i think in the two hole over there but i think he could lead off in this team and and i i've always hated kiki leading off for this team i mean his on base percentage last year leading off was one of the worst in uh the al so i mean i would rather move him down and then move everybody up you you kind of keep bogarts in that two hole which alex uh cora really enjoys batting him in that two hole again it breaks up your lineup a little bit but I, I just feel like him at the top of your lineup instead of at the, the two holes are going to be a lot better. You're going to have to stop saying two hole. Because Why is Mickey feel of a ring? <laughs> oh, the trots, the trots are kicking in. Uh, Ray, uh, does this signing, Bill brought it up in the opening takes, Tampa North, 
Uh, does this signing say anything about Heim Bloom and his willingness and ability to go out there and sign a big free agent for a hundred million plus uh, dollar contract? It's the first time he's done it in three years with the Red Sox so far, three off seasons. Uh, what does it say about Heim Bloom and the philosophy of the Red Sox in your opinion? No, because I believe he still didn't go out and get that big free agent. He waited for the big names to sign, and then Trevor Story was left, and that was a big splash that he knew that the media would be like, oh, great, he's actually going out and spending money on getting someone. So it's not the big splash that I think everyone was looking for because there's still things that we need to address on this team. It's nice that we got a second baseman, but I don't think this is a big splash that everyone should be happy about. I I don't – I can a little – actually, I completely and utterly disagree with everything you just said. I think – he was in on Freddie Shock. Freeman. He was in on Freddie Freeman, which was legit. But I mean, I, I think fuck for him, you. no, on, he wasn't. They Freeman. never told him. What? Shut, no, hold on. Let you, me dude. fucking let me finish. Like he don't not finish set, with he don't finish with what uh, you said with what you started. Not. With. I just think he's just setting the market. I I think they need had a need at second base. I thought he, they should have spent it on Freeman. <laughs> yo, but yo, Billy Bumbles, what, what, let, me, let me step in. Heimblum was not in on Freddie Freeman. That was a PR play. Trevor story was not a PR play. It was a discount play raise a little bit right on this. They didn't identify Trevor story and go get him. We, you know, the media gives Belichick shit for this all the time. They wait and wait and let the market kind of dictate and who's left. Who's the best. Who's left. Go give them an offer, sweeten it up, whatever. Get let give Bogarts, make Bogarts, ask him to call Trevor story and make him, you know, give, give him a little recruiting uh, call there. Get sweeten the deal a little bit. They didn't, they didn't identify Suzuki from Japan and go pay him what he wanted to bring him in here and play right field. They didn't, I, they didn't say Freddie Freeman's the best player out there. Let's go actually get him. They pretended to, and then they did it. And then they waited for the bottom to fall out on the high end deals and saw what was left and took the middle of the cream of the crop, which was Trevor story, which also doubles as backup for going cheap on Bogarts next year, which they absolutely are planning to do. And by cheap it for two years, they're going to, he's going to bail. He's going to the Yankees for fucking $400 million next year. And I guarantee it. I disagree. I think Bogarts wants to stay. I think Bogarts will stay for a reasonable uh, market deal. I think he wants to be in Boston. All right. He's, three for a one Oh five is the starting. He's point. been with the Red Sox since he was like 16 years old. Like he wants that puts him at six for 200. You're going to pay the, Bogarts the 30 million a year, 30 million a year. Who's the highest paid shortstop? Uh, Carrera. Seager. Carrera got on. How much does Seager get? He got three, three, 32 million a year. Oh. Yeah, but I think he's got more guaranteed. Like he's longer. I think. So, oh, that, yeah, but, but AAV what, is Carrera. I'm pretty sure. It's one of those that's two. Mar- that'll set the market for that's going to be the minimum. I don't minimum think Bogarts is going to go look for, for that deal. I really don't. I know that he's a, a Boris client, but he didn't do it. His first deal, he, he played, uh, played for less. I don't think he's going to pay for at play for as less on this contract but if the market's 35 i think he's he'll ask for 30 and eight the red sox should million. fucking give it to him eight for 300 million you paying bogarts that yeah with a, mayor so so what do you do yes. now you got marcel mayor coming up go get I some mean, pitching I, I, yeah I move bogarts to third there's I, I can give you a million different Ways well, to get around second base would have been the ideal place, but you I just can give you Trevor a million Story. ways to get around uh, too much talent in a baseball on a baseball team. A this was million. our problem before. We didn't have a farm system. Now we do. You can go out there and make deals and get these you guys. You want to rely out. on these guys that are three years out? I mean, come on. I'm fine letting Bogarts walk. I'm not paying him fucking thirty five million dollars a year, and he's I think he's three, going for he's a top three shortstop in the league. Mm, debatable. <laughs> Ooh, good plug. That's the that, that is uh that is I guess debatable. Um well that's all I had. Did you have any you want any final thoughts here on the Red Sox? Yeah, I think they've won like nine straight spring training games. Go Red they Sox. Lost. They oh, lost they lost today. today. They oh, lost sorry, they lost yeah, so they're... like eight, seven, eight straight. Congratulations. They're kicking Woo. some ass. We don't have we don't have time to do it today, but uh maybe next show we'll go over go over their pitching, which uh you want to go over their whole schedule of wins and losses? <laughs> right, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> one social win. level, we'll just do the win loss win loss win. 162. <laughs> um uh before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and kick it over to headlines with the obvious one. Uh thank you there, Richard. The Bruins' newest addition, Humpus Lindholm, made his debut on Thursday versus the Lightning. Racer Dramas doesn't do hockey, but me likey. The Bruins look to continue climbing the standings with Jacob Russ after Don Sweeney failed to strike a deal to ship that little turd out of town. 
Trevor Story is also new in Boston. He signed a six-year, $140 million deal to play second base for our Boston Red Sox. The Sox are whooping ass in the Cactus League. They are undefeated, except for today because they lost the Twins, which means only one thing. The Boston Celtics are the greatest team in the history of the NBA. Feed me those cookies. Yum, yum, yum. Tyreek Hill was traded to the Dolphins for a shit ton of picks. The Chiefs dynasty is crumbling, and the Patriots continue to lose ground in a stacked AFC. This has been Headlines with the Obvious One. Back to you, Richard. I was really hoping you'd finish up that uh, they're undefeated, which means only one thing. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't come up with everything, right? You know? Oh, sorry. Sorry. My fault. The obvious one. Um, what are the Patriots? What are the Patriots doing? Can I what answer? are they doing? Nothing. Go Nothing. ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Bill. Nothing. 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 They're watching everybody get better around them. AFC is stacking up and the this is unheard of for the Patriots and again I just we mentioned it last week zero moves all right cool you brought Trent Brown back you need to stabilize that but Malcolm Butler don't love it don't hate it just seems like another retread you hope that's going to hit Terrence Mitchell come on come on I mean just this Tyreek Hill deal going to Miami hurts because now Jalen Waddell had a I think he set the rookie record for yards or receptions last year. One of the two. And now you're looking at a one, two punch of him and Deva- uh, Devante Parker when healthy, who you also can't cover Mike Gusecki there. And you just said chase Edmonds. I mean, you mentioned it, they're a quarterback away, but if Tua has never lost against the Patriots and say what you want about Tua, but that you you could potentially be the third team in the division. There's this could yeah. be another, I mean, you're looking right now, honestly, on paper, the teams around you, Deshaun Watson against Cleveland. You hope to get Cleveland early in the season. Don- Deshaun Watson is going to get suspended. Just a matter yep. of how many games. You just hope he's going to fucking you, you play him. Cleveland set his contract up for him to get suspended. He's making a million dollars this year. I mean, they, they did everything in their power to set him up. He, he's going to get suspended. So you hope you catch him early. But every team around you got in the AFC got better, except for Kansas City, who just lost Tyreek Hill. Who are already better. Who are already um, better, yeah. And still without Tyreek Hill? Yeah, the Chiefs are better still than the Patriots without Tyreek Hill, but they got worse. There's, I mean, people Raiders aren't making a big better. enough deal about that. They're giving way too much credit to Patrick Mahomes. They could be a third place team in the AFC West. Ooh, I believe so. I believe so as well. Um, real quickly, the Matt Ryan to the Colts, which I think. So I said this on the opening takes. There's still a shit ton of question marks. I mean, you just you're brought still up a run first ooh, team though. You just brought up a big one. I mean, Deshaun Watson. He's going to be suspended. He also hasn't played in a year. It's a new team. It's a new, or you know, I mean, he's a year away from being Deshaun Watson in my eyes. So does that mean that you're better than them? Maybe not, but I don't think it automatically makes them better than you. You beat that team last year. The Colts, Matt Ryan, now all of a sudden is going to be fucking bringing them. The Colts lost to the Jags to get into the playoffs. The Colts were one of the worst teams in the league the first six weeks. And then they went on a run like the Patriots. I think they're a paper tiger, just like the Patriots were. So to automatically put them above the Patriots, I think is wrong. Um, I would have put the Dolphins in that same category. Tyree Kill probably bumps them up, but they're in the same boat. Denver, ha- people are so fucking high on Denver. Russell Wilson hasn't been a Super Bowl quarterback in seven years. I'd say so, the Chargers, though. The Chargers got better. I the think Chargers have lost good. the Patriots the last two times they played them, and Justin Herbert's still a young guy. And but Khalil Mack is better. coming off an injury, hasn't played. J.C. Jackson has only been in the Patriots system. There's not a ton of track record for guys leaving that system and being the same player they were. There's a ton of question marks for the teams that uh, loaded up, quote unquote, in this AFC um, that I still think need to be answered. Other than the Bills are the cream of the crop at this point on paper and on the field. Uh, and picking up Von Miller makes them that much better. The Chiefs are still up there with losing Tyree Kill. They take a step down in my eyes. And then after that, I think it's a crapshoot. And then Bengals after that, I think you get the Patriots. So uh, where's my Bengals? Better. Where's my Bengals? Bengals signed two offensive linemen to pe- protect Joe Burrow. I think that was their biggest problem last year. Here's what the Bengals are going to have to. Here's what Joe Burrows and Bengals are going to have to show me. If you don't get two 75-yard plays uh, out of a uh, um, 
Ch- fuck, Jamar sorry. Jamar Chase. Chase. Jamar Chase. Then can you win? Because you haven't proven that you can. So prove that to me. Question mark. I just think, I think there's the, there's more questions to be answered by uh, the stacked AFC than than we know. But certainly the talent is eye popping, and the Patriots have done bumpkiss to keep up with that. They haven't done shit. Uh, Andrew Callan Allahan wrote a post that's getting a lot of publicity here around town in the Boston Herald talking about uh, what the Patriots are doing essentially. And he boiled it down to three points, which all basically just say they're waiting till next year. Uh, So he's talking about a holding pattern in terms of bringing their own guys back, uh, just creating a culture and then getting back to the norm in terms of how they, how they team build, which is through the draft and in house, which has worked for 20 years when you had Tom Brady. Um, and last year was a stray from the norm and don't expect it again. But I just asked the question, why was it a stray from the norm? Because you haven't drafted well in seven years. So you had to go sign guys because you had shit talent on your team. You have to you fill shit the roster on your team. Yeah. And he says that next year uh, with, uh, with, you know, with the contracts that are set up and the way that the salary cap's moving, the Patriots are top five in cap space again with about 103 million expect for them to sign next year. Does nothing for me. Does nothing. Yeah, but for how me. many of those guys that are on the roster now are going to be free agents? Like how many years can you po- push up post Brady when Tom, uh, what's his Bill Belichick's seventy years old? That's the biggest question, right? How, yeah, many, how how can you keep pushing up fucking years while everyone's getting around you when you're chasing Don Shula and now this year on paper you look like a fucking six win team? Well, that's your six wins. Okay, how many times uh, you you look like you have two division wins on paper right now, right fucking now, two. The Jets. I don't, yeah, well, um, yeah, based on some uh, uh, recent history. The other thing to remember of the Dolphins is they have a new coach. So Brian Flores was uh, three and one against you or whatever, not this uh, nerd in the glasses. Um, so, yeah, it's it doesn't it doesn't look good. And holding that cap space doesn't do you any good. Here's one thing that I don't think is getting talked about enough is and I said this in the last show of the show before I have more confidence in their offense than a lot of people do, I think so. You're bringing back three offensive line starters plus Michael Winu, who was a starter the year before, who we have faith in. So you have to fill a right guard spot. I don't think that that should be terribly challenging. Um, you have um, Kendrick Bourne, who we all like, who's coming into a second year in, in the system. You have Hunter Henry, who we like is in a second year system, should be productive. Jacoby Myers um, will be signed, and you know he's a good third wide receiver. Um, you have Nelson Aguilar as a second year in the system who don't have a lot of faith in, but he should be better. I think, and obviously Mac Jones is a second year guy instead of a rookie. That's, that's a big jump for, for NFL two years in the system, a rookie quarterback going to the second year. The offense should be better just with the time that they have the key, the number one, the most important piece for that Patriots offense this year is John o. Smith. Cause he was a zero. Let's face it. He was an absolute eliminated zero. the they eliminated the fullback, right? So, I mean, it, Jacob, be John, Jacob Johnson was told when he was exiting that Patriots are eliminating the fullback. It, it, the hopes is that you're going to get John o. Smith on the field more and make some more plays, line him up in the backfield. But you hope it's not so much a run-heavy team if you're getting rid of your fullback, right? What are you going to do, let Mac Jones throw now? Who's calling plays? Joe Judge? Awesome. Uh, it's not Joe Judge. It's the uh, – who's the – Cameron something? No, that's the fucking uh, special teams coach. God damn it, Ray! Can you can you look? Sorry, can you look that up? The uh, offensive coach. He's been in this. The, the guy, tight ends uh, coach. The, tight the guy that's taken over. He's been in the system for seven years. I, you know, he's never called plays. So you're right. There, there's question marks everywhere with the Patriots. Coaching is certainly uh, not the least of them. Nick I just think Kaylee. Kaylee, yeah, yeah he's Kaylee, a tight yeah. end. Nick he's Kaylee. a tight ends coach. I just think that. Um, I'm a little bit higher on the offense, taking a, a step forward than a lot of other people are. I'm more afraid of the defense. I, I think you're top two. You can be you can be high on the offense with the defense. That that doesn't look good at all. On paper, right now, that looks sucks. like a yeah, <laughs> looks like a 2011. Remember when Julian or uh, Troy Brown was back there, fucking playing cornerback because we had no one. Yeah, seven years after he retired. Uh, oh, it was Edelman, wasn't it? Or it was yeah. Edelman. It was oh, yeah, Edelman. Yeah. No, Troy Brown did it too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Troy Brown, did, Brown it. did it too, but closer to 01, you know, 10 years later. Uh, but Edelman did it, you know. Oh, no, it's time traveling. Same position, different shade. Uh your your top ends are everyone's the same shade in my eyes, baby. Uh, boy. Uh cornerback is certainly your t- your depth chart of cornerback right now is Malcolm Mitchell, Jalen Mills, and uh busted up Jonathan Jones. And your backup is Miles Bryant. 
Good luck. Malcolm, oh. Malcolm Butler. Don't forget that. Yeah, put don't some I respect just, on his. Don't name. I just you say that? Malcolm Terrence Mitchell. Mitchell. Oh. <laughs> you combine the two. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I don't expect Terrence Mitchell to make the team. I don't think we'll hear his name again. Malcolm Butler, Jalen Mills, Jonathan Jones. Yeah, if this was seven years ago, you might be okay. It's not. It's not. This is four years ago, you might be okay. Although, uh, so I went back and looked at uh, uh, Malcolm's last season. He was 2020. okay. 2020, it's pretty good. He was okay. I think yeah. the reports out of Tennessee is uh, that his wheels are about to fall off. They said he, quote, couldn't run anymore, which is, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow as a cornerback. It's 32. Yeah, 32 and quote unquote average size. Yeah, uh, but what about the people that are uh, mental fucking problems or whatever checked out? He fucking left last year. He retired out of the blue. Like this guy has mental issues. Like he's not all there. Yeah, well, I don't know. He's been he, he he had enough mental fortitude to stay in the NFL for seven years, and then he probably didn't have a market in Tennessee. Was about to cut him, so he retired. No, he was in no, he was in no, Arizona. He went to Arizona. He was in retired. Arizona. He signed a yeah. deal with Arizona and retired. Yeah, well, he's a mental case, and now he's in New England. So good for them. Um, and I have no idea who's going to play linebacker for you. Does it, it just seems like they're not going to address that position um, and let Adrian Phillips, a uh, bunch of injured rookies. Uh, and Juwan Bentley go out there and play linebacker. Mm-hmm. Sounds like yeah, a good plan. And then cross Bobby Wagner off the list because he's in probably signed with the Rams. There you go. Go chase that ring, Bobby. Uh, yeah. So if those first two segments with the Red Sox and the Bruins making some moves gave you a uh, gave you a stiffy, this one certainly gave you a lynch. And so we uh, we apologize. Let's do this. Let's do a quick afternoon delight. We'll come back with Jack on some Celtics chat and uh, cheer things up again. Sky rockets in flight. Woo! Afternoon delight. Whoop. You guys have it. I think. Huh. Afternoon delight. I don't know, Ron. That sounds kind of crazy. What's up, Jack? What's up, everybody? How we doing? Good. How are you, man? Good. Good. What are you in a vagina? Dun- what? It, uh, you know what dun- <laughs> it's a uh, it's like a room divider. When I do podcasts, so just, people can't see my shithole of a room. Well, look at Phil's <laughs> room. He's got two closet doors, like an idiot. Yeah, I don't know if you. <laughs> one holds the guns. One holds the clothes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's all you need. <laughs> I like when Ray laughs at his own jokes. Uh, Thank you. Welcome, welcome it's back, like Jack. Work. Good it's to like uh, welcome back, Facebook Jack. Facebook posts. Good to have you. Uh, <laughs> Good to have you back. Um, just real quick, uh, it's been a little bit. Why don't we start with just tell the listeners uh, where we can find um, your work, and we'll get into a little Celtics talk. For sure, yeah. You, you can follow me on Twitter, at Jack Simone MBA. Uh, I'm the site editor at Hoops Habit for Fan Side, and I write for Celtics Blog and at The Hive of SB Nation covering the Celtics and Hornets. Uh, and, yeah, other than that, you know, everything's on my Twitter, so you can find it all there. So, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me again. Have yeah, I asked you this? How does it feel covering the Celtics and the Hornets? You have asked him, and yeah, every he time you talk to him, and, idiot. I don't remember. No, yeah, of course you don't. Uh, <laughs> question, uh, Jack. <laughs> I, I grew up a Celtics fan, so like that was the obvious thing. But when I was trying to get into the business a little, somebody I knew, uh, you know, in the NBA media space, helped hook me up with a, a job covering the Hornets. And so at that point, I, I was looking for anything, and I was open to any opportunity. So I took that, and they're fun. I mean, Lamelo Ball is great, Miles Bridges is great. They're a very streaky team, but. Uh, I got the opportunity to write for Celtics blog as well. And I just kept both. So I just kind of, I do it all now, which is, is keep, good. you keep, uh, you know, writing the good stuff. Maybe you get on Jordan's good graces and you know, get in front of his <laughs> eyes. That's always a possibility. Hey, uh, you never know. <laughs> so here's the age old question. Are the Celtics peaking yes. too early because they are without a doubt, the best team in the NBA right now, as we speak. So if you asked me this question in the middle of February, I would have said, yeah, probably. But the fact that they've continued to play at this level for another entire month, I I don't like, it's tough to see them slowing down. Like they haven't shown it. I I assume when they started this hot streak, a lot of people were getting, all right, when's, when's it going to happen? Like everyone's like Pistons game. There it is. The old Celtics are back Pacers game. There it is. The old Celtics are back, but like they've lost twice since the, beginning of February sorry three times and then one of those losses obviously it sucked to lose on KG day but that was a tough game against the Mavs who are also really hot so 
I don't think they're peaking too early because I don't think it's a peak. I think this is just who the Celtics are now, which is crazy considering where they were. But I think I think they're this good. So even with this, a crappy bench. <laughs> even with a crappy bench, because you don't need crappy benches in the playoffs because crappy benches don't play in the playoffs. Yeah, and the crappy bench has not been that crappy. You got Peyton Pritchard, who went two straight games without missing a three. Grant Williams, who's dishing out MC. Uh, uh, Batman. Uh, Batman. Sorry, yeah, love, yeah, me Batman. Yeah, <laughs> love me some Batman. Yeah, love me some Batman. A little too, too. I was so down on Grant Williams last year, but I was very high on Grant Williams his rookie year. Just looked like a basketball mm-hmm. player to me. And he figured out that three pointer. And then if Derek White can ever figure out how to knock a one for five from three, <laughs> you're going to be looking at a, at a, actually a, a good eight man rotation bet. right there. Yeah. Derek White's an enigma. He's, he's something, but he's good. He does he's everything else games. so well. But yeah, he, he does everything else so well. And the Celtics are winning because of that, that people are letting his three-point shooting slide. But you're going to need that to improve in the playoffs. But, you know, he'll, he'll turn it around, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think if you, you know, if Peyton uh, was to go in a slump, you just hope that Derek White comes out of a slump type of thing or, or Grant, yeah. something like that. Because you need some scoring off the bench. And um, they've been doing it these last, this West Coast trip for sure. Mm-hmm. What about the playoffs? So I agree with you. I think that uh, peaking is out of the question. They're not peaking anymore. This is, this is the team that they are. Um, Udoka has got them playing a certain style and they have bought in wholeheartedly Jalen and Jason have found their avenues to still get 30 points a game. Jason Tatum has taken his, you know, his level to a superstar, not budding yep. a full on superstar top five type of play. Wow. And, um, and this is where they're at, but do you need to see it in the playoffs now? Like, do you need to see it when Jimmy Butler and those boys come to town and lock up? And, 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 and put the pressure on you. I, I think you do. I, I was just talking to my buddy about this. I think a first round getting past the first round is expected, right? If you lose in the first round outside of like, say Durant comes into town and drops 50, like in game seven, like, I mean, what the hell are you going to do? Right. Kevin Durant's going to do Kevin Durant. But outside of that, like one very specific scenario, getting out of the first round, I think is a given at this point. If you're the Celtics, you're playing this well, you get out of the first round. Getting out of the second round, I think, should be expected. But if they don't get out of the second round and they just run into a wall, like you said, against Miami, somehow, like, it sucks, but it defeats your preseason expectations. But with how they're playing right now, I don't see any reason they can't get to the finals at the very least, right? Like, Miami's wow. going to be tough because of Jimmy Butler. Um, you look at Philly, like, obviously, the Celtics played Philly fairly well outside of that one game this year, but you don't know because of James Harden. Um, Milwaukee, obviously, they just won a championship. They're good, but... The Celtics are allowing since uh, I, I believe since the start of 2022 are allowing like a hundred points a game, which is just unheard of in the NBA in this era of basketball and in their, their defense in 2022, I was listening to a podcast earlier, their defense versus the second ranked defense in 2022 has the same difference as the second ranked defense and the 18th ranked defense. Like this, the gap between the Celtics and the Mavericks at one and two is the same as the gap between the Mavericks and the Oklahoma city thunder at 16. Like that's how good the defense has been. So the, the, the defense is real. And as much as, you know, superstars win in the playoffs, the Celtics have that too. Like you said, Jason Tatum is dropping 35 a night in March. So if you have that and the best defense by far defense wins championships, superstars win championships. The Celtics have that more than any other team in the NBA. Yeah, their defense is certainly suited for the uh, for the playoffs. I don't really have any worry in that. Here's where here's where I'll get worried, and here's where I may have to eat my words on Jason Tatum, superstar, but I don't think so. That Mavs game, I think, opened up some uh, film on what to do. Mm-hmm. They just doubled and tripled and blitzed Tatum literally every time he touched the ball. He did the right thing. He got rid of it, but that ball didn't find Jalen enough. You know, it was finding Peyton in the corner and he was missing or Grant who was trying to drive and that's not his game. And there's a reason Jalen Brown's a number two in the NBA. It's so when Jason Tatum gets tripled, he can go to work. And I think that they'll have to make that adjustment in the playoffs because if you're a playoff team and you're not doubling Jason Tatum every time he touches the ball, you're just an idiot. So, Mm -hmm. and I don't expect that out of the Spolstros and the Doc Rivers of the world. So I fully expect Tatum to see some pressure and Jalen's going to have to step up. Emi is going to have to draw it up to make that happen. For sure. And I think like what you said about the bench, uh, what you guys mentioned earlier is also going to be important because I just pulled up the Mavs Celtics box score. Celtics lost this game by three, by the way, they didn't get blown out. They lost by three. Derek White shot 
two for 10 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. Grant Williams, 1 for 6 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. Peyton Pritchard, 3 for 7 from the field, 2 for 5 from 3. Jalen Brown shot 2 of 7 from 3. Like, as much as that is an issue, and that's been a persistent issue all season for the Celtics, with how Peyton Pritchard has been shooting lately, with how Grant Williams has been shooting lately, they're not going to shoot that poorly for seven games in a row, right? So if you lose one game because they blitz Jason Tatum, yes, they it... <laughs> <laughs> if you lose one game because they blitz Jason Tatum and people miss, like, fine. But Ime Udoka, who, by the way, should be in coach of the year conversations, he's not going to win it because there's some better candidates, but he should be in conversations. He should be good enough to adjust. And also, Bill, even if you're right, even if, you know, they won't, the bench won't shoot him in the playoffs, Jalen Brown's not going to shoot that poorly in a seven-game series, right? Like, they, they will adjust. I they will find Jalen Brown. So I, I think at the very least, you'll have the handicap of Jalen Brown and with how Jason Tatum has been playing, even if they double him, he's not even going to shoot that poorly in a seven game series because he's just that good. So, as long as he I'm defers, confident. that's the biggest thing. Yes. Like you mentioned the Mavs been. game, but if you start going back to hero ball, it, you know what's coming. I think the, the playoffs are a different game. They start going that hero ball. I don't think mm-hmm. they have guys that could shoot their way out of it. Right. So, I mean, as good as Tatum's been this year, he starts taking on those double triple teams and not deferring to guys like Brown and, and say what you want about Horford, but he's been pretty fucking money for this team this year. And, I don't know if they have the mentality to win. I will stand by that. I think they don't know how to win. And until they prove me wrong, I'll stand by it. They don't know how to win. And I don't think they have the mental toughness to win in the NBA outside of the regular, outside of the regular season ever debatable. See, I I would have not, not fully agreed with you, but I would have understood your mindset a lot more like, in January, because up to that point, we hadn't seen Jason Tatum be able to defer, not just this year, but ever really, he's never really been able to get out of the, okay, I have to do it all mindset. And maybe it's Udoka, maybe it's Al Horford in his ear again. He's doing that now. He's averaging, I think, I don't know the exact number, but in 2022, he's averaging over five assists, I believe. He's and, and if he's not getting an assist, he's getting a hockey assist. He has an impact on every single bucket the Celtics get when he's on the floor. And like more than half of them are just him passing the ball really well. He's finding people. Uh, and in turn, he's getting open more because they can't double him if he doesn't have the ball, right? So I, I think you're seeing that next step in that next maturing process with Tatum right now. And like you said, if he doesn't do it in the playoffs, then it's going to take another couple of years for him to learn. But again, they've been playing like this for the sample size of good Celtics has now officially overtaken how large the sample size of bad Celtics was this season. And so I don't see, right? Yeah, something ridiculous, something ridiculous. It's like 38 games of good Celtics, 35 games of bad Celtics, and they're top four team in the Eastern Conference. And I don't see Jason Tatum especially after seeing how successful this version of basketball can be regressing back in the playoffs where the, the lights shine even brighter. I, I I'm confident that Udoka and Al Horford, who I see as kind of a secondary coach at this point will be able to get in the ear of Tatum and Brown and be like, all right, like this is the playoffs. So how does yeah. that fear against like a Nets team now that the, the vaccine mandate has been lifted now? I mean, that gives Kyrie, you know, seven games that you could face against the Celtics. And I mean, mm-hmm. as much okay. as we all hate, as much as we all hate Kyrie on, I mean, his talents, I mean, they're, uh, they're he doesn't like to be booed a, here. So that's the, I don't care. They're, st- they're still a good <laughs> fucking team. And now him being able to play home games takes another disadvantage advantage away from the Celtics. I think Brooklyn probably scares me the most out of any playoff team. And it's not even as much Kyrie Irving. Obviously Kyrie's phenomenal. I mean, 60 points is fucking insane. Kevin Durant's, gonna score like 30 points a night he's he is the best player in the world and i I was again i was talking to my buddy earlier the celtics have the defense to slow down and beat in at least four of seven games right and that's all you need you need to slow them down not stop and slow them down they can slow down Giannis because of horford they can slow down and beat because of horford they can slow down james harden because of marcus smart they can slow down you know jimmy butler and tyler hero because of their defense bro you can't do (laughs) anything (laughs) You, you can't do anything kevin durant's gonna get his buckets right and especially when you have uh, Kyrie Irving and the corpse of Ben Simmons whenever he decides to play yeah. basketball. I don't like they can they could win that series because we saw them beat the fully healthy nuts a couple of weeks ago, but that's gonna probably be the most challenging and taxing series. Other than that, I think the Celtics will probably be favored in any series. The, the Nets oh, series Ben is... Simmons, though. They didn't have Ben Simmons and say one about Simmons. Ben but Simmons still, they gotta play. He's still a top five defender in this league. Yes, I mean, maybe. you want to talk about a guy that could shut down Tatum. I mean, he's a guy that you could stick on him. Maybe. He hasn't played in over a year. And he, last it's... time we saw him, he was giving up dunks in the playoffs. So uh, I'm not putting a lot of faith in Ben Simmons. But 
even if he's there, then that series, the, the reason it scares me is because you have to win with a shootout, to your point, Jack, that yes, yes. you're going to have to win 120 to 110. You can't beat them 90 to 100, right? Because of and if, Durant and Curry. And if they do, and if they do, then... I mean, yeah, then, <laughs> then, it's sky, then it's sky's the limit there. And that's a series that Jason Tatum has to show up seven out of seven games. We dropped, yes. we saw him drop 50 and be the best player on the court last year as the only Celtic basically on the court in the one game yep. they won in the playoffs. So he's capable of doing it, but over a stretch, we'll have to see. I thought, you know, again, not to harbor on that Mavs game, but that had a playoff a- a- atmosphere and Luca has their number. I get it, but <laughs> The, you know, they, they lost by three, but they lost and they missed a bunch of shots. So it, it, the playoffs are going to be cert- certainly their test. And I think if Tatum mm-hmm. sees himself doing it and being that same player in this, the same way that they're playing in the playoffs, confidence will continue to rise and they can carry that. And yeah, I think they have certainly finals potential. We'll leave so, it on that, exactly. Jack. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by, man. Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Only what nine more games in the seat. Well, this airs Friday. So eight more games in the season. Not not much, yeah, and they're blowing out the Jazz right now. So another good one in store, hopefully. Knock on wood, but yeah. There you go. Thank it's you guys for having me, a Celtics fan. Take it easy, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Have a good one, guys. Clear, Jack. Peace out. All right, real quick break. We'll do a simple minds of the week to uh, end the show. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid does. Let's do some simplest minds of the week. I have uh, two candidates in front of me. I'll start with with mine. Dan Snyder. He could be on this list basically every week. But this week, uh, all of the Washington, D.C. regional radio stations have decided to not air the Red Sox, the, sorry, the Commanders games this NFL season because they want to talk, quote unquote, truthfully about the Commanders and Dan Snyder was uh, not allowing that. Audacity is the big company that owns 98.5, the sports hub and, you know, a lot of these other uh, radio, radio stations. Station. Yeah, pretty much at this point. Are they Comcast? I think so. Wait, 98.5? Audacity. Audacity. Audacity is not Audacity. They own EEI, I think. Yeah. Oh, Audacity is it EEI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe EI, Comcast yeah. owns the company that owns 95. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Either way, uh, the radio stations are bailing on Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder came out and said, we bailed on them. It's a tit for tat now. But this fucking guy, Congress has asked for a uh, public um, uh uh, investigation on all the sexual harassment and stuff that's been going on that they've been trying to sweep on the, under the rug. The NFL fined him $10 million. He's in the hole, hundreds of millions trying to get out from his partners. Why are they just going to kick this fucking guy out? Like, what is, what is, what are they waiting for? Well, the, it's his wife that runs the team now, Rich. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Silly goose. Put me on the simplest minds of the week. Oh. Uh, we're late. So why don't you go to the next simplest minds of the week? Bill or Ray, whoever we were. Bill, go ahead, Bill. I nominate Jorge Masterball. Uh, Masterball, I should say, as he attacked Colby Covington this week. Uh, he put on a what was it a, a hoodie and a uh, you know a mask and went in and attacked him at, when he was leaving Poppy Steakhouse in Miami. Uh, cracked his tooth, punched him in the eye. Uh, for me, you had 25 minutes to beat his ass three weeks ago. Uh, you lost in a decision. You didn't really do anything. Um, instead, you you try to a sneak attack and jump him when he's leaving a restaurant seems like a bitch move to me in my eyes it's going to cost him two felony charges now uh from miami dade county police but it's just it's a bitch move to me i mean settle that shit you know you had it you had 25 minutes in a cage to settle your dispute and now you got to take it to the street because he lost you know i mean he, he cited his kids you know coming to him was talking about his kids either way but you don't you you don't meet a guy on the street and, and cold cock him, sucker punch him like that. I just thought it was a bitch move for a fighter who claims, you know, the, the BMF champion. And it just seems like it's not a good look to me. Yeah. This guy just seems to just continue to talk and talk and what a downward trajectory for him after he took that fight Island fight Usman, on Usman, short Usman, notice yeah. loss. Yeah. People gave him the benefit of the doubt. Then he kind of went like right wing conspiracy, Trump Hardo. And then, now he's just been talking shit about everybody and losing every fight he steps into. It just seems he like he puts himself in the out to by get himself Usman knocked after. out. He, he got a rematch after taking that on six days and literally got his fucking head blown off by Usman. He just got knocked the fuck out. I mean, he, he's on a four fight. I don't think he's won a fight since he beat Nate Diaz for the BMF champion. 
fucking made up belt come on i mean he's a street fighter he came up with kimbo slice back in the day he's always been a street fighter and you know he couldn't finish it in the cage now you're going to take it to the street and, and cold cock a guy leaving dinner come on you know whatever happened you know i get it you want to throw some fists but at least don't come out don't run on them with four or five guys yeah and that's and that's what it, that's what it came down to fucking dumb, uh, quickly i've lost one, one more uh nurchich from portland Got fined forty thousand dollars because a fan called his mom trash. Uh, your mom is trash quote, and also called his mo- grandmother a bitch. And then he Who's confronted dead. the fan who is dead. Yeah, but still, I mean, you can't. Well, why are people getting so like their fans? Like they're trying to get under your skin. You're getting paid millions of dollars. Fucking suck it up. Just play. I'll say this about Nurkic: all he did was throw his phone. Like I, I understand what the NBA is doing. You can't go interact with fans like melee in the palace, like you can't let that shit happen. They have to protect themselves, but I don't, I'm, if I'm nurtured, I'm probably doing more than throwing his phone. Like you think so? You think I don't know if your grandmother that, died of COVID uh, the Jokic? year before. I mean, I know you called your grandmother a whore or whatever you did the other day when Cut. she died. Cut. Sorry. My apologies. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That shit can get on your sin and he's not playing. So he's just like on the bench stewing the whole time. Is he I can hurt? See how, Is that why I, he's not playing? Yeah. He's hurt. Oh, okay. I can see how it could get to you, but yeah, no, you can't do it. And yes, if it was just a mother joke, if it was just your mother's trash, then yeah, you're an idiot. Just like fucking hand. I mean, you guys it. talk about banging my mom and grooming day and all that shit. I mean, yeah, but if she the dies, she's not dead. Do it. Mike, oh, his will. mother's not dead. Well, well, no, no, I'll blood. make fucking her corpses. You miss the point. It's the grandmother. That's the that's the over the line part that got the phone the phone toss. And if you hit him or something, that'd be the Race mom's so cremated. Toss. I'll fuck her ashes. <laughs> This has been the Silver Mind Sports Show, Friday Rewind, uh, March 25th. We'll uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Uh, we got a 